Across the alley from us was the Paradise Dance Hall. On evenings in the spring, the windows and doors were open and the music came outdoors. Sometimes the lights were turned out except for a large glass sphere that sometimes hung from the ceiling. It would turn about slowly and filter the dusk with delicate rainbow colors. Then, the orchestra played a waltz or a tango, something with a slow and sensuous rhythm. Couples would come outside to the relative privacy of the alley. You could see them kissing behind ash pits and telephone poles. Promise me one thing, son. What, mother? Promise me that you'll never be a drunkard. I will never be a drunkard, mother. Good. That's what frightened me so. Eat a bowl of farina. Just coffee, mother. Shredded wheat biscuit? Mm. No, just coffee. You can't go to work on an empty stomach. You've got 10 minutes. Don't gulp. Drinking too much hot liquids makes cancer of the stomach. Put cream in. No, thank you. To cool it. No, thank you. I, I want it black, OK? I know, but it's not good for you. We have to do all that we can to build each other up. In these trying times we live in, all we have is each other to cling to. That's why it is so important. Tom, I sent your sister out so I could discuss something with you. If you wouldn't have spoken, I would have said something. What is it, Mother, that you want to discuss? You know how Laura is. So quiet, but still water runs deep. She notices things, and I think she just broods about them. A few days ago, I came in, and she was crying. What about? You. Me? She has an idea that you're not happy here. What gave her that idea? What gives her any idea? However you do act strangely. I'm not criticizing, understand that. I know your ambitions do not lie in the warehouse. That like everybody in the whole wide world you've had to make sacrifices. But Tom, life's not easy. It calls for Spartan endurance. There are so many things in my heart that I cannot describe to you. I've never told you this, but I loved your father. I know that, mother. I know. But why, Tom? Why are you always so restless? Where do you go at night? I... I... go to the movies. But why do you go to the movies so much, Tom? I go to the movies because... Mom, well, I like adventure. Adventure is something that I don't have much of at work, so I go to the movies. But you go to the movies entirely too much. I like a lot of adventure. <laughs> Most men find adventure in their careers then most young men are not employed in a warehouse. <laughs> the world is full of young men who are employed in warehouses and offices and factories. Do all of them find adventure in their careers? They do or they do without it. Not everyone has a craze for adventure. Man is by instinct a lover, a hunter, a, a fighter, and look, none of those instincts are given much play at the warehouse. <clears throat> Man is by instinct? Don't quote instinct to me. Instinct is something people have gotten away from. It belongs to animals. All right, and about Lara? <laughs> we have to be making plans and provisions for her. She's older than you, two years, and nothing has happened. She just drifts along doing nothing. It 
frightens me how she just drifts along. I guess she's the type that people call homegirls. <clears throat> I put her in business college. <laughs> A dismal failure. Frightened her so it made her sick at the stomach. I took her to the Young People's League at the church. Another fiasco. Now all she does is fool with those little pieces of glass and play those worn out records. What kind of life is that for a girl to lead? What can I do about it? Overcome selfishness. Self, self, self. Is that all you think about? Haven't you ever liked some boy? Yes, I liked one once. His name was Jim. I came across his picture a while ago. He gave you his picture? No, it's in the yearbook. Oh, a high school boy. <laughs> yes, his name was Jim. Here he is in the Pirates of Penzance. The what? The opera the senior class put on. We sat across the aisle from each other Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays in the auditorium. Here he is with the silver cup for debating. You see his grin? Oh, what a jolly disposition he must have had. He used to call me Blue Roses. Now, why would he call you such a name as that? Well, when I had that attack of pleurosis, he asked me what was the matter when I got back. I said pleurosis, and he thought I said Blue Roses. And that's what he'd always call me after that. Whenever he'd see me, he'd holler, hello, Blue Roses. I didn't care much for the girl he went out with, Emily Meinsenbach. She was the best dressed girl at Sodan, but she never struck me, though, as being genuine. Um, it says in the personal page that they were engaged. That was six years ago. They must be married by now. Most girls that aren't cut out for business careers usually wind up married to a nice, Young man, sister, that's what you'll do. But mother. Yes? I'm crippled. Nonsense, Laura. I told you to never, ever use that word. Why? You're not crippled. Just a small defect is all, hardly noticeable even. When people have slight disadvantages like that, they cultivate it to create other things like charm and vivacity and charm. That's all you have to do. One thing your father had plenty of was charm. And so, that following evening, I brought Jim home for dinner. I had known Jim slightly in high school. In high school, Jim was a hero. He had a tremendous Irish good nature and vitality, one of scrubbed and polished white chinaware. He seemed to be moving in a continual spotlight. Your brother tells me you're shy. Am I right, Laura? I, d I don't know. Well, I judge you to be an old fashioned type of girl. I think that's the best type to be. Hope you don't think I'm being too personal, right? Um, Mr. O'Connor, have you kept up with your singing? Singing? Me? Yes, oh. I remember what a beautiful voice you had. When did you hear me sing? Oh, blow ye winds, hey ho, a roving I will go. I'm off to my love with a boxing glove ten thousand miles away. You say you've heard me sing? Oh, yes, yes, very often. I don't suppose you remember me at all. You know, I have an idea I've seen you before. In fact, I gathered that idea as soon as you opened the door. Huh. Oh, yeah, you had a name, but that name wasn't really a name, so I decided not to call you it. Wasn't it? Blue Roses. Blue Roses? That was exactly it. I 
didn't connect you to high school, but that is where you're from. Isn't it funny what sort of tricks your memory plays upon you? And I didn't even know you were Shakespeare's sister. I'm sorry. I didn't expect you to. You barely knew me. But we did have a speaking acquaintance, right? Yes, we spoke to each other. And when did you recognize me? Oh, right away. Then why didn't you say something? I didn't know what to say. I was too surprised. So, what are you doing now? I don't do anything much. Oh, oh please don't think I sit around doing nothing. My glass collection takes, a good, takes up a good deal of time. Glass is something you have to take good care of. What did you say about glass? Glass collection. I have one. I'm really unfamiliar with that type of stuff. What type of glass? Little articles of it. They're ornaments, mostly. Most of them are little animals made out of glass, the tiniest little animals in the world. Mother calls them a glass menagerie. I have one if you'd like to see it. Well, I don't think you should. I'm not the most stable of people. In fact, I'm quite clumsy. Oh. I never went to the moon. I went much further, for time is the longest distance between two places. Not long after, I was fired for writing a poem on the lid of a shoebox. I left St. Louis. I descended the steps of the fire escape for a last time and followed from then on in my father's footsteps, attempting to find in motion what was lost in space. I traveled around a great deal and the city swept about me like dead leaves, leaves that were brightly colored, but torn from their branches. Perhaps it was a familiar bit of music. Perhaps it was just a piece of transparent glass. Perhaps I am walking along a street at night in some strange city before I found companions. I pass by the lighted window of a shop where perfume is sold. I look in the window, tiny transparent bottles in delicate colors, like bits of a shattered rainbow. Then all at once, my sister touches my shoulder. I turn, I turn, look, to, look into her eyes. Oh, Laura, Laura, I try to leave you behind me, but I am more faithful than I intended to be. I reach for a cigarette. I cross the street. I run into the movies or a bar. I buy a drink. I speak to the nearest stranger. Anything to blow your candles out. For nowadays, the world is lit by lightning. Blow out your candles, Laura. And so, goodbye.